What's up Iron Man fans? This is the video you've been waiting for so long. Today we will continue to make the real Iron Man Mark II suit. Power system with self-powered hydrogen reactor, repulsor upgrade, bulletproof armor and exoskeleton, the concept and first prototypes of all these parts are in this video. Send it to your friends right now and begin watching. In previous videos, I made a plasma repulsor, a hydrogen reactor to power it, a part of an exosuit and even developed the world's first pneumatic muscle system that doesn't require a compressor for work. I know what you're thinking about. Alex, stop saying all these big unclear words. Alex, it's time to make the whole new suit. Actually, the pedantic guy inside me wanted to release a finished video after I finished at least a whole new power system, but you ask me not to make the big gap anymore. So I decided to make you direct participants in the development so that you can enjoy not only the uh, final result, but also the whole process. Moreover, this way I can add all the cool ideas that to the project which you now throw in the comments right now. So now I quickly answer the question where I get my inspiration for work and we will continue with Reactor. If you enjoy my channel, you will definitely fall in love with Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream has thousands of streamable documentaries and non-fiction TV shows on topics like history, travel, nature and our favorite – science, engineering and fantastic future technologies. Just imagine, shooting this video for you, I learned the secrets of building German war aircrafts, took a tour of the real reactor and also learned properties of the most advanced composite materials that I will now use in my exosuit. In fact, Curiosity Stream is a smart TV for your smart TV that can also be streamed to any device, uh, viewing anytime, anywhere. This is the exact place where I get my inspiration. Using my link in the description, you will get access for a whole year just for $15. Don't forget to use my promo code AlexLab to get the deal. Join the team! Thanks Curiosity Stream for sponsoring my project. You guys completely understand that building a real Iron Man suit is a costly party. The heart of Tony Stark's technology is an arc reactor. This is the first part of the suit that he made. The heart of my suit, which I also made before doing all other systems, is the electrolyzer. This device converts 1 liter of simple water to 1,800 liters of rocket fuel, that is hydrogen and oxidizer. This fuel enters the palm repulsor through the gas distribution system that I mounted on my exoskeleton. Remember one of the first models that I built in 2018 in a dark cave from a box of scrap? This reactor was powered by a heavy lead-acid battery, which made movement difficult, but Alex Lab technologies do not stand still. So, now I use lithium-ion batteries, or if I'm very lucky, lithium polymer batteries, which is uh, much cooler, with much more energy density, which push as much amperes into Iron Man reactor as it can withstand. I steal these batteries from my friend Alex. Uh, me and Alex make electric bikes at our weekends for the need of our restless souls. I decided that if these batteries can accelerate an electric bike with uh, 120 kilos of bike and me from 0 to 50 kilometers per hour in two and a half seconds, then it would be a sin not to use such a powerful thing in Iron Man's suit. Another important upgrade in addition to powerful and lightweight batteries, this is the first time I used post-electrolyzer power supply in the Mark II suit. Unfortunately, not a high-voltage Stanley Mayer circuit that I still cannot build, but a low-voltage switching power supply circuit of Dave Lawton, which automatically limits the current and over-voltage on the plates. This Smart 555 timer circuit reduces all power losses to almost zero, making it the most efficient electrolysis unit available today. If you didn't understand the last 30 seconds, then in simple words, this thing that shines in my chest in terms of efficiency is the same that is now used at NASA missions. Sounds cool! But if my math on energy balance and aerodynamics is right, and I know it is, then the efficiency of even the most modern electrolyzer will still not be enough for flight. Where to get inspiration and strength when your reactors are not powerful enough? On a scrapyard! This time not a simple scrapyard with some metal stuff, but at a scrapyard of promising Russian scientific projects 
that have been buried in the last 10 years by our energy department. So now you know one more place where to find ideas. In addition to a bunch of interesting working prototypes, I found a completely original device. A self-powered aluminum hydrogen reactor that operates on the oxidation of aluminum. Did you know that the reaction of one kilogram of ordinary aluminum with water produces 1,000 liters of pure hydrogen? That is, the 13 gram aluminum soda can, when reacting with water, gives 13 free liters of hydrogen. Of course, I immediately collected all the empty cans peeled in the corners in my lab uh, in a couple of days. The only thing that stops oxidation reaction is the oxid film on the aluminum surface, which is simply removed by adding some alkali, for example, toilet cleaner. And you're like that, Alex, what does this have to do with empty cans at toilet cleaner? and the Iron Man suit. I explain. If we install compact flat backpack with aluminum elements, a supply of slightly potassium water and a control system on the back of the suit, then the suit will have a self-powered onboard fuel source. Completely self-powered suit like in a movie. That is, we receive primary energy directly on the suit uh, by a chemical method without an external supply of energy. Hydrogen from the reactor can be used as eco-friendly fuel uh, for a repulsor and also can be easily converted directly in electrical energy without burning through hydrogen fuel cells, which are already used in hydrogen drones. Cool! I came up with this. Like, use it! Of course, there are some nuances here. For example, it is extremely important to control temperature of water, uh, the concentration of alkali, uh, the active area of the core at each moment uh, of the time precisely because the reaction speed depends on it. But actually local experts told me that, you know, this is a standard set of parameters that you need to control in such reactors like Chernobyl and Fukushima. Also, do not forget the oxidation reaction of aluminum is a highly exothermic reaction, so it goes with a huge release of heat. Uh, this will certainly solve the icing problem, uh, but after that the main thing is not to cook yourself in your own suit uh, like, like a Thanksgiving turkey. As you can see, even if there are no fresh videos on my channel, for a long time Alex has a lot of stuff to do, and in April the channel members will receive oh, the holy grail on which I have been working for two years. Uh, this is detailed manual for calculating and making DIY electrolyzers. I couldn't find anything useful in either Russian or English, so I decided to write it by myself. Becoming members of the channel, you not only get the PDF guides and the other materials, but most importantly, uh, you support my cool developments for the benefit of our fantastic future. Let's continue! Let's move on the repulsor. You remember it is a harmless plasma stabilizer on the arm. In a new model of a fantastic gadget, I want to try to combine the principle of operation of three existing and quite working devices. The first is the ion engine, the device that creates a jet thrust uh, through high voltage and directional of ion flow. It creates small thrust but doesn't consume fuel at all. Of course, it will not create full thrust in the condition of uh, Earth atmosphere, but turn out to be useful uh, for the formation of outer contour of the jet stream. The second is the electromagnetic plasma control unit. Uh, well, you probably tried to play around with a candle and a strong electromagnet, and you know that even such a low temperature plasma as a candle flame can be remotely controlled by an electromagnetic field. Uh, in fact, plasma and electromagnetic field affect each other. Half a century ago, people were burned on a fire for such tricks, and now uh, they give grants for researchers in this field. It's good for us that we are not longer in the Middle Ages, because I would definitely have been burned first. 
And the third device is an almost forgotten Soviet device of pulse detonation type jet engine. Так сказать, секретная советская разработка. The same one we assembled at the closed department at our aviation institute, but smaller version and with an aerodynamic valve and rather than a mechanical valve. Because mechanical valve, like in moving parts of all turbojet engines, obviously burns out uh, because of the heat of the hydrogen. For this reason, only pulls, ramjet and rocket engines are suitable for hydrogen. Just can't wait to show the first bench test, but uh, the prototype is really still completely raw and God created me without spare parts. And Secondly, after YouTube demonetized my video about toy pneumatic Nerf machine gun as a content about firearm, I honestly don't even know what I can be shown on YouTube and what cannot. Helmet and armor are what makes Iron Man Iron Man. And I like the way Iron Man sounds, uh, although technically I make armor from an alloy of aircraft grade aluminum, stainless steel and titanium, so in fact the suit is much lighter and insanely more expensive than iron, but it is okay for you to call high-tech, almost gold price armor Iron Man. I believe that the addition to improving aerodynamics, the suit uh, should also protect against bullets. I propose to start with a degree of protection sufficient uh, to at least play airsoft uh, in this costume in summer. So it is necessary that all plates, flexible connections on uh, joints and especially the face plate uh, withstand direct hit of airsoft bullets at close range. By the way, I want to warn you uh, in advance that if the helmet, for example, will turn out to be almost the copy of movie version, because, uh, you know, Tony Stark and my head are usually uh, the same configuration. But, for example, with the chest plate, uh, a complete resemblance will not work, because my hydrogen reactor is not located in the chest inside, like Tony Stark's, but outside, and you definitely won't be able to make it smaller. So, I tried to make this suit as canonical as possible, but uh, now the fact that the true proportions will be not 100% like in the movie. Also, I want to hang different equipment uh, for different parts of the suit, and this also can affect the design. But it seems to me that the most difficult thing is still not armor. Outside there is a hard suit made of steel, titanium and aluminum alloy, which we call uh, iron by habit. And inside there is a human body, 
with all the endless complexity of biomechanics, individual mobility of each joint, uh, with internal tendency towards winter mass gain, uh, I mean, uh, periodic changing body dimensions. How exactly are these two completely different layers supposed to connect and interact? Metal and flesh, machine and man, hard and soft. Where and what exactly should be the attachment points for exosystems, actuators, artificial muscles? This is real challenge for any engineer. Some parts of the outer armor should move more relative to parts of the body, for example, the hand and palm plates, and some less, for example, leg protection. Just for example, my exoskeleton. Even uh, when fitted precisely to my arm, this design severely restricts movements. Uh, the hand quickly gets tired. Uh, more elegant design is needed. That is, you just can't uh, connect two sections of pipe with two bolts and hope that uh, putting your uh, foot there, uh, it will be convenient to walk in it. We definitely need a more complex and sophisticated hinges. But I'm sure that together we can make it through. Bottom line, a lot of super interesting work awaits us. Uh, write down in comments all the ideas that come to you uh, about any part of the suit. I know that engineers from all over the world are watching me and now I need your help. Because who is Alex Love without his fans? That's right, just pumped and pretty smart guy. <laughs> Subscribe and click the likes and share this video with your friends. Uh, become a sponsor to get uh, PDF guides and to create something awesome with your own hands. Awesome adventure awaits us and if you stay with me, uh, there are truly great things awaiting us. It is just Alex Lapp and his fans. Alex Lapp and his fans and their adventures. All day long, forever. All hundred days Alex Lapp and his fans. Forever and thousand times uh, more. Over and over and over. Alex Lapp and his fans adventures.com. Uh, www.alexlapp.hisfans.com